This is Eyewitness News up close. I think the orphans can reach all sorts of opportunity if they can actually get around. So we have to fix the subways. I'm not Donald Trump. The mayor cannot continue to hide behind Donald Trump. He needs to be accountable for his record. The race for mayor of New York now officially full throttle and steaming ahead to Election Day, November 7th. This morning, Republican challenger Nicole Maliotakis trying to beat incumbent Democratic Mayor Bill de Blasio. So who is she? And why did she want to become the 110th mayor of New York? Also this morning... For those of us who were there and for those who were witnessed it, like every New Yorker that was uh, old enough to remember, um, it sticks with you. New York City Fire Commissioner Dan Nigro, 16 years after the September 11th attacks, <laughs> talking candidly and talking emotionally about the impact of the terror attacks on him and on the biggest fire department in the country. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to Up Close. I'm Bill Ritter. It has been called the second most important elected job in the country. Probably a, a bit of inflation to that claim, as many mayors of New York have found out the hard way. But it is a huge bully pulpit, working in the city hall, the nation's most populous and, some would argue, most important city in the country. Would you want the job? Most people would not. This morning, someone who does wants it so much she's trying to topple a sitting mayor to get that job. We welcome New York Assemblywoman Nicole Maliotakis, now the Republican nominee for mayor. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Did I get your last name right? Your, you, your you pronunciation? You absolutely did. Maliotakis. And, and how many times have you heard it mispronounced? Many times, but I do my Irish phonetics, Molly Otakis, and oh, then people, <laughs> people remember it from there on. So that, that's, your, that's your Irish part. Now, you, you are um, uh, a diverse person, as it turns out, right? Cuban and Greek, that's I'm, where the Takis comes from, I guess. I'm the, I'm the daughter of Greek and Cuban immigrants, and only in New York City would you have a, a, a mix like that, but that's what makes our city so special, and unique. It, Exciting dinner table conversations, I'm sure, right? I was well fed growing up, for sure. Exactly. And, and how is that going to help you uh, trying to run for mayor, I think, being, being, being coming from a diverse background? Well, you know what? I, I, this is the city that I love. I was born in. I grew up in. My parents came here um, from Greece and Cuba to achieve the American dream. They had a small business in uh, Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Um, and I feel that we need to continue to make New York City a beacon of hope and opportunity. New York City has gotten increasingly difficult to start a business, to own a home, even to keep up with the rent has become difficult. And I think that we're heading in the wrong direction in terms not only of affordability, because of some of the policies that have come out of City Hall that have increased the cost of living and doing business here, but I also think just in terms of the quality of life, to see how it has deteriorated over the last three and a half years, whether it be the homeless crisis that this past year alone, 39% increase in street population, homelessness, whether it be mentally ill individuals who sometimes are also homeless, uh, who are on the streets, a threat to themselves and other people, whether it be sex crimes that have increased 25% in our city, or the transit crisis, 70,000 delays a month in our city. I believe that some of the policies that have been put forth by the current mayor have led to this, and it's sort of his I don't care attitude about actually doing the day-to-day -day job of managing the city and addressing the vital city services that are, are being in, in oftentimes not delivered. With some irony, I'd say a lot of what you just said is a very similar campaign speech that Bill de Blasio would have given four years ago. Yeah, yeah, but you know about Bill's the unaffordability of this city and how yeah. it's being torn apart and people can't afford to be here. Well, anymore. this is a mayor who ran on a policy to to lift uh, people out of po poverty, to close a tail in the gap of two cities, and yet it's gotten worse. New York City has become more unaffordable, and not only that. Uh, if you're a property homeowner, your 28% increase in the property tax levy, if you're a renter, that cost plus the double-digit water bill increases have been passed on to you. The mayor, you know, this tale of two cities is there, but it's become the mayor's donors and friends and then the rest of us, and that's really what the tale of two cities is right now. Before we get into the weeds of the issues, and I know you have strong opinions about them, and I want to I learn your opinions, and we will, I guess, over the next uh, seven and a half weeks. Um, why do you want to do this? Why do you want this job? You were an assemblywoman, and you are an assemblywoman. Mm -hmm. uh, no experience really in, in local government. Why do you want to do this? Well, you know, I worked in nonprofit, nonprofit, uh, private, and public sectors. Uh, currently, I am a New York State Assembly member representing Brooklyn and Staten Island. Uh, I've been very passionate about various issues, from transportation uh, to improving access to ride for our senior citizens, improving education for our children. Um, I've restored bus service to my district. I sued the Port Authority when they uh, tried to increase our tolls. And uh, I've been at the forefront of reforming Albany, changing really the culture, uh, calling on Shelley Silver to resign. One of the first individuals to do so 
believe me, it was not popular at the time, but he was using taxpayer money to silence victims of sexual harassment. I was at the forefront of the fight to strip pensions from elected officials that were convicted of crimes. I see much needed reform here at the city level. I see a pay to play mentality with this mayor, individuals who have bundled money for him, whether the lobbyists or developers getting sweetheart deals. Uh, I see To a, be fair, a, no charges were brought against no him. Charges, no wrongdoing no was charges, wrong. but of course it, it was still unethical and when you look at uh, the idea that a playground on the Upper East Side that's part of a housing uh, development, uh, public housing, is being leased to a developer who uh, bundled nearly $40,000 for the mayor. That, that to me is problematic and is a symptom of, of what we call pay to play in government and it's not right. I mean we need to be putting the people first and the mayor always always rails against the big developers yet he, he's being funded by them and so we need to change number one the culture but then what I see is a mayor who has an I don't care attitude about actually doing his job we have a homeless crisis as I've mentioned I put forward a 15 point plan to deal with that many of the things that the prior mayors have done have been undone by this mayor leading to a problem that is only exacerbated how would you get homeless people into affordable housing in New York City well that's the thing so so it has a, that has eluded every mayor in the city. Yeah, so, well, this mayor wants to build 90 homeless shelters across the city. Why would we not spend those funds to build affordable housing, partner with nonprofit organizations who can do that? Uh, we need to work with Governor Cuomo on supportive housing. Critical. This is, we've had New York, New York agreements in the past that were very successful. There have been three of them. In the long run, it actually saves taxpayer money and it gives people a quality of life to transition out of the shelter system. We need to invest in vocational training. Those those people who want to work, want to get an education and a skill, they can do so, start their own business, join a union, uh, and support themselves and their family. What's your relationship like with Governor Cuomo? My relationship is, is good. Look, I, I've, I've had my battles with the governor publicly. He sir. voted for Hillary Clinton, you voted for Donald Trump. Yeah, well, you know what? We're not always going to be on the same side. I, I always vote on the side of uh, trying to shake things up, shake up the status quo. And I'm not happy with everything that the president has done, to be honest. Um, but, you know, you have to make a choice. Uh, but what I will say about the governor is he's somebody I, I have worked with in Albany. Uh, when, after Hurricane Sandy, my district was devastated. I've had thousands of people that were misplaced. I had to work with the governor, my colleagues, to make sure sure the resources they needed to get back in their homes and rebuild their lives were there. And I'll tell you this much, we are still battling with the city to get people back in their homes five years after Hurricane Sandy. A lot of that though, the mayor would say, is federal problem, not local problem. Well, no, it's a local problem because it's the Build It Back program. It was federal money that was given to the city, but then it was the management and execution of the Build It Back program that is had so much red tape, so much bureaucracy, so much waste. We have one home in my district that cost uh, nearly seven, over $700,000 to rebuild and the home was valued at $250,000. Uh, so it's, it's that type of mismanagement that I believe this mayor, you know, the buck stops with him, he's responsible for it. We see a lot of wasteful spending throughout the city and that those, those uh, contracts with vendors and consultants need to be audited and we need to make sure we're doing right by the taxpayers of our city. What do you think the response is going to be to people in New York voted overwhelmingly for, Don, uh, for Hillary Clinton to, to your support of, of Donald Trump. And I know you were originally supporting Marco Rubio, yeah. but you did help help with his campaign. In, in well, I, I didn't help with his campaign, actually. I, I was Marco Rubio's state chair. I know everyone wants to, the mayor wants to exaggerate my relationship, uh, saying that I was supporting Trump, but really, after Marco Rubio dropped out, I never endorsed another candidate. Hmm. Um, what I will say is that I've disagreed with the president on a multitude of things. I don't agree with the wall. I don't agree with the travel ban. I dis I've actually came out against his proposal when he, 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 he um, prohibited transgender from serving in the military. Uh, I don't believe we should be stripping status from uh, those who have the DACA status, but we should be moving forward with streamlining a broken immigration system. Um, I believe that uh, there are, when we disagree, we're going to disagree. I, I'm going to do what's in the best interest of my city and those individuals that I'm elected to represent. A lot of women in New York are going to look at you and say, well, a, a woman run, running for mayor. And then they're going to look at your record and say, you're against abortion. And, and maybe it shouldn't be a litmus test for how you vote because really the mayor of New York doesn't have much say over the abortion well, I'm not issue. Against, I, I actually would like to clarify the record. I'm not against abortion. Uh, I would not vote to repeal Roe v. Wade. Uh, the vote that I took in Albany had to do with expansion into the third trimester, which I think many New Yorkers, in fact, if you, they, it was polled statewide and more New Yorkers, many more New Yorkers are opposed to it than for that. So that's the difference. Uh, I, I would you know, like to clarify that record, please. Okay, well that's an interesting you. thing. It's different than what I read in all the uh, all the press clips anyway. Well, you know, the, the 
press likes to say what they say, but that's my voting record. That's how I voted. I voted against an expansion uh, into the third trimester. But again, I'm not a member of Congress. Uh, if I was, as I said, I would not be voting to repeal Roe v. Wade. And, and quite frankly, it really has nothing to do with the uh, mayor's office and, and not something that's under their jurisdiction. Very briefly, and it's been great having you on. I would like to have you on again before the election. Uh, $86 billion or so budget. It's a lot of money. What experience do you have that would uh, say you could help lead that? Well, I'm one of the ones who actually debates the budget in Albany and tries to point out what's wrong with it and where we should be spending money more. Uh, I have an MBA. I'm very, uh, very astute when it comes to looking at the details. Most, most legislators come in, they just rubber stamp it without actually going through it, talking about the debt limits, the backdoor borrowing. Those are all issues that need to be discussed. What I will say is that this mayor has increased spending by $15 billion, and there's nothing to show for it. We have seen the quality of life deteriorate. We have a transit crisis with 70,000 delays a month, which, by the way, should be one of the priorities where we're putting money. The fact that he refuses to work with the governor to address our transit crisis is unconscionable, especially when he's spending $15 billion more. Um, so the mayor is the one who has the inability to actually manage the taxpayers' money properly. I've been a fiscal conservative. If you look at my record in Albany, I'm always speaking about the need to use taxpayer money properly. What I see in the city is a lot of waste. We have education contracts with vendors and consultants where there's no accountability. Uh, we see thousands of uh, tablets and, uh, and, and, and laptops missing from the DOE. A controller has pointed out many of these flaws, yet the mayor hasn't done anything to rectify it. I will. You're just beginning your campaign. Seven and a half weeks to go. Good luck to you, and it was great meeting you. I hope you come on the show again. Thank you very much. All I right. appreciate it. Thank you. Assemblywoman, thank you very much. This ad was paid for by Nicole for New York City.